morning everyone. Glad you could join us for our midweek reflection this week. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Ian Greenwood. I'm the vicar here at St. Anne's. It's just a short reflection this week. Um, I've been struck over these last few days by the various trends that have developed during this lockdown period. There was the owner of a bicycle shop on the news the other day saying uh, bike sales are going through the roof. He actually said that if you wanted to buy a bike uh, for under a thousand pounds, you'd be really hard pressed to find one because stock is so limited as everyone's bought all the bikes. I hope this newfound love of cycling continues uh, after we are able to return to some level of normality. Uh, but the cynic in me seems to think that there might well be a number of bike bargains to be had on eBay in the coming months. It's the same with inflatable hot tubs. Uh, well, obviously we've had amazing weather in April and May and lots of people have decided to take advantage of this and get out in the garden and enjoy that space and, uh, and to buy a hot tub. And these inflatable ones are really easy. In fact, I've been quite tempted myself to get one of these because they're quite simple to, to put up and, uh, and then you can pack them away during the winter when you don't want them. And there's lots of benefits to having them in the garden. However, what also is amazing is the price, the price has almost doubled because of increase in demand. We are by nature, as humans, quite competitive, aren't we? There's something in most of us that wants to have bigger and better. So when we see someone else with a new bike or a new hot tub, there's something in us that says, I want one of those. And we see this across all walks of life and across all ages, keeping up with the latest fashions and the latest trends. And I don't just mean clothes, but it could be home decor, it could be garden furniture, lots of different things. That's how these fads take off, isn't it? Do you remember a couple of years ago, fidget spinners were the big thing for kids to have. In fact, every shop seemed to be selling fidget spinners. And there's loads of things, if we think back through history, where, where this, this was the case. As a dad of four kids, there have been loads of times during this lockdown period where I've been quite exasperated by my teenager's lethargy. Staying in bed, seeming to have no motivation to want to do anything. And I'm sure if you've got kids similar age to mine, you'll understand what we're going through. And then, if it's not lying in bed, it's then playing on the PlayStation or the Xbox. And yet when I challenge them about it, the response that I get is, everyone's doing it. Why can't I do it? All my mates are doing it. Do you remember saying those exact same words to your parents? I do. Um, I'm sure everyone's been there. It's not fair. Why can't I do that? Do you remember, um, or was it Harry Enfield, his character Kevin? Uh, well, if you think about Kevin and you get a flavour for how things might just be in our house at the moment. But all this left me thinking, why is it that we seem to want to do what others are doing? Why is it that we want to follow like sheep? Why do we just copy everyone else? Yeah, of course, it's nice to have nice things. There's nothing wrong with having nice things. And you could argue, I work hard, so why not treat myself? And again, there's nothing wrong with that. But there's more going on, I think. It's something about acceptance. It's about wanting to fit in, and perhaps uh, a little of wanting to impress others and to say something about our own status. Why? Because perhaps there's a little bit of self-doubt in each one of us. We sometimes feel that we're not good enough and uh, we can't keep up with other people. Our life isn't as good as theirs, or our family life doesn't seem as perfect as theirs. What I want to say to you today though, is that you are amazing. You are utterly brilliant. Now you might not feel that. You might not see that as you look at yourself, but God looks at you and God thinks, Wow, you are fantastic. Isn't that amazing? 
that God, the creator of the universe, thinks so highly of you that he made only one of you. You are completely unique. There's not another you. There never will be another you. You're that unique and you're that special. In fact, if you were an antique or something like that, we would describe you as being completely priceless. God puts it like this in Psalm 139, one of my favourite Psalms. These words. The, the psalmist says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in that secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I love that psalm and I love those words. God knit us together. He saw us inside our mother's womb and he loved us beyond words, even before we were born. Why? Well, the psalm says, because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're made in God's image. Now that is pretty special. It's pretty incredible. And I think today, maybe we need to stop looking at what others have and thinking, if only. We need to perhaps look at what we've got, look at ourselves and think, wow, thank you, God, for making me, me. Thank you for giving me what I have, for the blessing of my life. Let's start rejoicing in what God is doing in our lives. And perhaps let's begin to look at ourselves as God looks at us. Maybe we need to love ourselves a little bit more. And I don't mean in a pious, self-centered, selfish kind of pride way. I mean, let's start to love ourselves in a godly way. That enables us to accept ourselves as we are. Because simply put, you are good enough in God's sight and he loves you and that's enough. But not only are you good enough in God's sight, he actually trusts us with carrying out works and tasks for him. In other words, he not only created you, but he created you for a purpose and a task. And it's a task that only you can do. That's unique for you. Ephesians 2 chapter, uh, verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In other words, God prepared something for you. When he knit you together in your mother's womb, he sees the future. He knows what he has in store for you. Jeremiah 29 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for good, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. What does God want you to do for him today, I wonder? Whatever situation you find yourself in, remember, God created you. God loves you. And you are good enough. You are strong enough. And with God's help, you will succeed. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you knit us together in our mother's womb. That all the days ordained for us were written in your book before one of them came to pass. Lord, that you have us in the palm of your hands. And that you have plans for us for good. Help us to trust in you today. Help us to, to love you more. And through that, help us to love ourselves more, that we might grow more in your knowledge every day. Amen.
Looking forward to seeing you uh, hopefully this Thursday for some of you as we start our What If course online through Zoom. It's not too late if you've not signed up for that and you'd like to sign up, then do email the email that's on the screen now and we'll gladly send you through all the details that will enable you to join us uh, tomorrow evening. That's Thursday, June the 11th. And if I don't see you there at the What If course, then hopefully I shall see you on our next online Sunday service at 10.30. Until then, God bless.